All right, have a moment to myself to just relax, enjoy some anime, work on my next top 10 list, which is top 10 himbos of anime. We're really doing this. But it seems you guys are highlighting something important on Twitter. Hmm, what could it be? And it was convenient that this was all under my desk. Mm, I'm gonna have to talk about AI, aren't I? Let's do this. Okay, so there's been a bit of a debate about the goods and the bads and the uglies of AI. I'll tell you my opinions about it at the end of this video, so stick around for that. In recent news, however, the uh, popular voice actress Erica Linebeck quit Twitter because she was bullied by a bunch of Futaba fans who were outraged at her because she wanted to remove a song that was created with her likeliness and AI. This is the world we live in, folks. I hate it here! So, AI can basically replicate other things to create certain forms of media. Like, it can create any form of art you want. Uh, it's trying to get into animation and, like, video recordings. There was a really creepy one I found of a fast food chain once. When hunger strikes and you need a treat Bug Blast is the place to meet With juicy patties and cheese so melt but it is going into music and voice acting where it's taking someone's voice in many tones and pitches, take that into recordings and use it to read dialogue. One of the most prolific, biggest stars to lend their voice to AI is James Earl Jones because he's getting old. He doesn't see himself doing voice work anymore, but he knows how attached everyone is to Darth Vader's voice. So he's giving his likeliness, he's given permission, it's the key word, permission, to let the AI programs replicate his voice for any future projects. I don't know what the arrangement is from here on out, like if the profits are gonna go towards his family, or if he just got like a big old check and they could just use his voice for all of eternity, I don't know. It's for him to decide. But there was a bit of drama with some voice actors lending their voices to AI. Like they are giving permission for AI programs to use their likeliness in certain circumstances. And there were some that were agreeing to it, but then the fandom were like, no, 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 don't get it, give in to this fad. Don't do this. And a lot of actors are just backing out like, okay, I admit where I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I remember that drama on Twitter, that was, that was fun to read. But here we have Erica Linebeck, uh, the voice of Futaba from Persona 5 recently. She's been Luna from Hell of a Boss. Someone took her voice and made a fan recreation of Futaba singing a cover of Welcome to the Internet, which I think is a song by Bo Burnham. Uh, very good song. And they just wanted Futaba to sing it, not to pay Erica Linebeck to do it or to ask her to do it, or maybe she would have to get permission to do it. I don't know, but she ju this person just did it and used AI programming to use Erica's voice for the, for the cover. Erica heard it and politely asked the artist to, you know, okay, this is cool and all, maybe, but I didn't give you permission to do this. Please take down the song. You don't have my permission to use my voice. And the original artist agreed. The original song is gone. However, fans of that song, or fans of just Futaba, made copies of that song and have been re-uploading it like crazy without Erica's permission. And now there's like a brigade all over Twitter asking people to report every single video that goes up. They shouldn't have existed. They shouldn't have started. Take it down. And the next thing we know, because Erica's been making comments about these songs, how she's aware of it, and how she's just, she asked the original artist to take it down, you know, politely, and she's given her thoughts about people borrowing her likeliness without her permission. This started fans, quote unquote, fans, those types, to attack her. You love Futaba to the point where you're going to attack her voice actress. What is wrong with you? So because of all of the hate and threats that she was getting on Twitter, she left. 
What a world we live in. Where, where, where is that wine? Come here. It's been one week. I think I have a little mark on my lip. I haven't had that since I played the trumpet in high school. <laughs> Trumpeters now. Brass players now. So Erica Linebeck left Twitter because she was getting relentlessly threatened by so-called fans that were upset that she was asking for the original original song. You know what I mean? Like that cover that was using her likeliness, stealing her voice to make this cover. And now there's complete outrage because it's like, why? That's not her. This isn't her singing it. This is an artificial intelligent replicating her voice stealing her voice she did not give permission for an ai program to use her voice i know fataba fans can be a bit uh, worrisome but damn what's wrong with you i remember years ago that uh, it was like a real concern like people were actually talking about like well what if someone replicated anyone's voice and frames like a phone call with their voice technology is scary but yeah i'm part of the cause that is reporting every video any chance i can get like when I, when I see each of those videos uploaded and re-uploaded and re-re-re-re-re-uploaded re re a bunch of times i report it because she didn't give permission it's not fair and now when i see it it just reminds me of how an actress was bullied off of social media because a bunch of fans didn't like how she was trying to defend her at work and that's the bottom line when it comes to actors and voice actors like they're scared they are scared of being replaced by these artificial intelligent programs that can perfectly replicate their voices. The technology isn't there yet, but when it gets there, a lot of actors and actresses are going to be replaced. So here's where I get into the topic on my opinions on AI. It's inevitable because Hollywood is run by crony corporate assholes. They don't care about creativity. All they want is the bottom line, which is the greens. They want profit, maximum profit, nothing but profit. To the point where they will like, you know, give as much money as they want to the actors and actresses because their names are what's selling the films, so to speak. But the real people that are putting it together are like the special effects artists, animators, lighting directors, prop makers, they're being severely underpaid. That's why there's a writer strike now because there's now AI programs that can replicate writing. And there's people actually making spoofs about like, oh, I made this episode using AI or that chat GPT shit. Like, you see why writers are panicking. Like, what if we get replaced? But it's inevitable. Hollywood's gonna do that. They will replace actors, actresses, voice actors, voice actresses, animators, artists, script writers, if it means they can save millions of dollars. They're going to examine carefully what it's going to take. It, it, it's probably going to be like, you know, be somewhere like with animation or just somewhere connected with a profitable IT that's an IP. IT. IP. You know what I mean? Like anything that is attached to a popular IP brand, they're going to make a product out of that using artificial intelligence because they just want you to consume. With that kind of technology where they can just create where they, whatever they want at a snap, they're just going to keep dishing out products for you to stream and watch on the theaters, screens, everywhere. It's scary what's going to turn out to be. And it's appalling because they don't care about everybody else that wants to contribute to Hollywood, that wants, that, that they dreamt about making movies about being stars, about being, you know, singers and performers and writers. They don't care. If you're not making them money or if they have to spend money on you, they, they want you out or they want you as cheap as possible. The only, you know, solution I could think at the end of the day when it comes to AI is everyone gets access to it. Like writers, animators, artists, voice actors and actresses, anyone who has a dream, a vision, an idea to create their own products using AI, they can now. As long as everyone has access to this kind of technology, just go for it. There's plenty of people that have been wanting to create a show, an animated series, music, their own art, and they have to go through like leaps and bounds 
Like, especially with people that want to make movies or animated movies or TV shows, they have to come up with animatics, uh, plot theses, um, just have, have like a play in a range of just what product they're trying to deliver. And if, it, if it's not good enough in the eyes of the corporates, it's not gonna get, it, it's not gonna get a chance. That's why a lot of people turn to things like Kickstarter and, you know, crowdfunding. We wouldn't have ideas like Hell of a Boss, Hullabaloo, um, a whole bunch of other ideas would not have been greenlit if not for crowdfunding. And I think, like, if those types of people had this kind of technology to create whatever they wanted, bottom line, it's gonna come down to who has the better story, who has the better presentation. And honestly, it's it all depends on who makes it, because if Hollywood does turn AI and pushes out the middleman, just say, you guys out of here, I can do this by myself, then the people who actually come up with all these ingenious ideas and all these creative ideas and all this beautiful art, they're gonna get the crowd because it's genuine. It's beautiful. It's from the heart. It's not because of greed. So I don't know how Hollywood is gonna handle this. I think they are dumb enough to go f head forward into AI programs, wait till it's perfected, kick everyone out and use it for themselves. But if we get our hands on that software, we can create whatever we want. And there's a lot of ideas I have in my head. I wouldn't mind coming up with them. I just know it's not gonna be easy. And I'm just thinking about like, you know, with all the time that I'd spend on like script writing and all that stuff and which idea I would start with. I know someone who's actually working on their own animatic and it's taking some time, but you know, art, you can't rush art. Art takes time. And when it comes to acting and voice acting, I don't think it's there yet. Like it's pretty impressive what AI can do, but I think people still want to be attached to the actors and actresses who bring their characters to life. If we know that the character up on the screen isn't real or isn't being voiced by someone real, you lose a bit of humanity, you, you lose a bit of touch between those characters. Not to mention, it's no fun when you go to a convention and you can't meet your favorite actor or voice actor. It's no fun. But also, you're not going to get a genuine performance from a program. I don't care how impressive of the programming it is, you're not going to get a genuine performance from AI. Like I felt with my performance as Theo throughout the majority of the time voicing this precious little coconut boy, that he's sweet, he's innocent, and he's always ready for action, and just ready to have an adventure. But season three was where I pushed myself to the limit with, you know, this acting range for Theo because, you know, spoilers or non-spoilers, you know, if you haven't seen the show, just I'm gonna go a little bit into what happens. He's glitching out, like he's a video game character outside of his video game and he's having technical difficulties. He's glitching, he's trying to hold himself together because he wants to help Tari and he wants to be there for her and have more adventures with her. So there's like this struggle of trying to stay positive, even though deep down he is in a lot of pain. And when there's like this battle between him and Evelyn, you know, just trying to like, you know, get to Tari and he's trying to protect her. And there's like this really intense fight between Theo and Evelyn. That's where I, I really just put my all into it because he's struggling and he is upset. Like he is just giving it all to protect Tari, to protect his friends, even though he is in a whirlwind of pain. I don't understand what's happening to me, but I know you're trying to hurt my friends! So you have to be stopped. And it was that performance that had actors like Jason Marnoka, Elsie Lovelock, Anthony Sardinia, Haley Nelson, just like a whole bunch of the actors from the show, they're just like, damn Robin, and I'm like, me? You guys are praising me. Like, that that was like the highlight of just, you know, giving my heart and soul into this little kid and that episode alone, just having all the actors turn to me, they're just like, damn girl, that, that was impressive. Well done. And I'm just like, you're not gonna get that with AI. This feeling that I had of earning the role, putting my heart and soul into this kid and being praised by people who have 
a way more impressive portfolio than I ever will. You can't replicate that feeling with AI. Erica, you deserved better. You did what you felt was right, and I'm with you. What happened, you know, this, this fan thought they were doing something cute, but didn't realize that this kind of program could remove potential jobs for you. They didn't see any harm in it, and they respected your wishes. They took it down, and you got attacked for doing the right thing. I am sorry, Erica. Just know that the real fans who love your work, who love you as a person, who love all of the characters you've brought to life, thank you. And I am so sorry that this is happening to you. Like, this is a painful chapter in this world of AI versus people. Oh my god, we're gonna get to Terminator soon. I'll be back. I'm gonna end it right here. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. What do you think about AI? And what do you think about this whole situation with Eric Linebeck? Again, just leave your comments down below. Coming up next will be top 10 himbos of anime. I'm gonna do my best to get that video up as soon as possible. Uh, I'm a bit busy with my current job. It's holiday season here in Australia, uh, but I'm gonna do my best. Uh, we got all the nominees down. We're just gonna have to solidify the top 10 and we're gonna make it work. But thank you all so much for watching. More awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned, Anime America. Bye. Love you, Erica.